Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Doyle, and I am a solutions engineer here at Webflow. In 2019, I actually attended the previous no-code conference where I was sitting in audiences listening to discussions like this and was in awe of how companies had adapted Webflow into their tech stack. So today we've arranged a wonderful panel where we have three Webflow Enterprise customers, and we're gonna be hearing from them about how they were able to unlock the power of no-code in the enterprise. Welcoming today, we have Max, Murray, and Michael. And Max, can I have you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm Max Falica, and I'm Director of Brand Design at Attentive. I joined in April, 2020. Wonderful, and Murray? Hi, I'm Murray. I'm from uh, TED Conferences. I run the initiatives team, and I work with all the initiatives around TED. Wonderful, great to have you, and Michael. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Pichardo. I am a senior web creative at NVIDIA, but prior I worked at Smug Mug and Flickr and drove the adoption to upload. Great. Really welcome to you all. Excited to have you here. Excited to learn alongside of everyone. And without further ado, let's get going. I would love to hear prior to switching to Webflow, what was your team using to build and manage your sites? And if you could speak to when you were exploring a new platform, what criteria were you all looking into to really make sure that your team was going to have success? Murray, if I can have you speak first. Sure. Um, like I mentioned, I work with the initiatives at TED. There's a lot of them. They all have real estate online that they need to manage. And some of them were going out of house. Some of them were going in-house. It was a pretty chaotic process. So we were looking to consolidate those tools that they're using to, to manage their websites. And importantly, we really wanted um, a like vetted agencies to work with so that if we couldn't do it in-house, that they would have the option to go out of house with, with someone that we trusted. Sure. And Michael? Yeah, our marketing team was managed in-house, but creating new pages or testing was difficult because we had to borrow an engineer from another department. And that was difficult because uh, we would have to re-explain sometimes, it'll be different engineers. And marketing really needed to be independent. Speed to market was important. Uh, so we were looking for a platform that we could own. And Max, how about you with Attentive? When I joined Attentive, our site, our marketing site was built on WordPress, um, mainly because an easy to use CMS was extremely important to our marketing teams. Um, that same criteria applied to vetting any new platform. Out-of-the-box CMS was crucial. Uh, also, we were, were using a, a no-code tool called Unbounce to create microsites. We, we didn't consider moving forward with Unbounce uh, for the marketing site because it just wasn't powerful enough to run our full marketing site. That's really wonderful to hear. Thank you all for that. Uh, that brings me to my next question. What drove your need for a no-code solution particularly? And I'm curious, were there any key moments or pain points that led you down the path to finding a no-code tool? And uh, Michael, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, the moment that we knew we had to change was when we needed to change a small thing on the marketing website. It was just a button and uh, we wanted to change it, but that whole process took a whole week. And the scary part was not a lot of people were even shocked by it because they were used by that timeline, that process. I used to be an engineer and I knew that took way too long. So something had to change. Max? Yeah. So being that WordPress is not entirely customizable for non-engineers, we were reliant on a third party to build in. Um, we, we, we interacted with them in uh, design. However, being reliant on them, you know, our, our, our go to market speed was just not quick enough and we didn't really own our own destiny. Furthermore, we have an incredibly talented team here at Attentive and, you know, tons of full stack designers that really possessed the talent to be able to own our marketing site. Um, and so that, that was pretty important as we kind of moved past WordPress. So it sounds with both your teams, it was very similar of wanting to bring some ownership back into your teams with the sites that you were building. 
and relying less on engineering resources to do so. Uh, This actually makes me curious, what were some of the more challenging aspects when you were getting folks on board with Webflow during that buying process? Max, let's start with you. At the risk of sounding kind of salesy, it was not a difficult process. We uh, you know, no one was entirely tied to WordPress. Uh, no one was happy with the process that surrounded that. So really all that was left for us to do as a design team was create a proof of concept, like really show that we can use the platform, the platform being Webflow. And uh, we actually spent some time on a weekend and came in with a pretty full functional website. And that was proof enough. Uh, no, no one really needed any any uh, further indication that we could do it. <laughs> Working over the weekend to get that in. Uh, Murray, what was Ted's uh, experience? Sure. Anytime you put a, a process in place, you're taking away some of the agency of, of the teams involved. And so we really had to balance like the benefits that they're getting out of this, that we're taking away some of the, the stress of figuring these things out on their own. Um, so yeah, it was just about selling them on, on the benefits above like them losing some of their uh um their agency yeah michael yeah um we definitely had some valid questions um is webflow powerful enough can it do what we want it to do uh but i thought talk was cheap i need to show them and similar to max i worked on recreating a landing page that we launched recently in my downtime. And I really wanted to showcase the power of Webflow through the animations, CMS, editing the live site through the editor. And in two days time, I presented to the team and they were really impressed and they loved it. So I'm sensing a common theme of building out actual proof of concepts and sharing those with other internal stakeholders here. Uh, So Murray, starting with you, now that you've incorporated Webflow into your tech stack, how has that site work manage? Uh, how has that site management workflow changed for you all? It's a lot more streamlined. Um, we have teams that come to us instead of they come to us at the beginning of a project. So instead of coming to us uh, at the end and saying, "Hey, we did this thing," they're coming to us at the beginning and saying, "This is what what we're looking to do. We know that you're the team to work with. We know that that Webflow in this case is the tool that we want to use that that we are using," um, and. Yeah, so that's really helped. And then from our team's perspective, it really helps that we can um, decide if we have the bandwidth internally or if we need to go outside with an agency. So it just has really like consolidated the process and made it a lot more clear to all of the stakeholders. Max, how about with Attentive? A lot's changed, actually. Uh, In the days that we were reliant on a third party, I would say that the working group was much smaller. being that you know those functions existed in the agency, uh, taking it uh, in house, we we've, we've had to really flesh out that that working group, um, and we've really refined it in the past six months or so. Uh, we've actually also added things like we've hired an SEO agency to help us optimize that, which is crucial. It's been so helpful. Um, we we're even adding net new uh, roles. We are hiring for. A, a web marketing manager, which is something that didn't exist at Attentive beforehand. Wow, that growth is really exciting to hear about. Since this is the No Code Conference, I have to ask a No Code question. What has been the most valuable part of adopting No Code technology? Uh, And then on the other side of the coin, what's been the most difficult part? Uh, Michael, how about you? I could definitely speak of the value of Webflow. It gave our marketing team the tools and the time to explore, do something new or create a new promo page. And I think that's really valuable for any marketing team. And the first test of validation for us was when we redesigned the website. It took us a month to do it. Um, and usually there'll be a lot of bugs, something we've missed in production. And it'll take a week to do. But for us, launching through Webflow, we were done before lunch. Max, how about with Attentive? Yeah, um, so so th- there's definitely been overwhelmingly positive results. Um, I would say uh, we've moved past this idea of waiting for a full refresh to pay attention to our marketing site. We can be a lot more iterative, um, which is is huge for us. Um, the 
a, a positive is also the negative. Um, uh, I think as designers, we love having control uh, and not seeing gaps between our design and the live end result. But at the same time, you know, no one on the team is outwardly a front end designer or engineer. And so, so there's a learning curve, but it, and it's also hard to get folks to understand that uh, because the platform is no code, things don't happen instantaneously. There's still a design process. There's a build process. And um, so there's been a, a, a learning curve in, in, in bringing everyone with us in that. I'd say the downside is similar to what Max had to say in that, um, you know, some people think that tech is magic and no code makes it even more magical. Um, so that there, there is still a process involved in getting the work done. However, the benefit is that we can move faster than we ever have before without taking up our developers' time. Um, I, I kept talking about our developers' bandwidth. They need to be able to work on more complicated problems than building a website. And so it's really powerful to have something that gives these initiatives agency over what they're working on from like a, within, within bumper lanes um, without taking up the time of our engineers to work on more important things or more important things. Quickly, before we wrap up here, I would love to hear, are there any final thoughts that you all would like to share about your transition to Webflow? Uh, you know, Max, is there anything from Attentive? Yeah, that's funny. Uh, it reminds me of, of something that our CEO, Brian Long, says often, and that's that we are in a space where it's survival of the fastest, um, which is to say that attentive, um, we, we, we deal with text message marketing and that's really an emerging space. And so we have to be insanely fast and iterative. We have to listen to our customers and respond thoughtfully. Having this control that Webflow has allotted us is, is hugely beneficial in reaching those goals and, and, and really hitting those marks. Thank you for that, uh, Michael. Yeah, uh, you know, our team loves Webflow and the switch has really helped us out. I mean, we were moving slow, now we're moving really fast and we're able to um, look at the market and respond to some of the changes and, you know, create new pages. And I actually pulled up a few stats from our first month of using Webflow. We were able to increase our conversion rate to 54%. Our click-through rate was up by 18% and we decreased our bounce rate to 44%, all that while, while, while uh, uh, being independent. So I think it's been an incredible experience and we love it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing those numbers. Max, Murray, Michael, I can't thank you all enough for sharing your insights here. They've been incredibly valuable. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. Thank you so much.